Hello, in this video, we are going to take a look at supermarket sales data. Um, it looks like we do have several transactions here. So if you would like to see how many transactions we have in this database, we can do this. We can just hit command, uh, shift and bottom arrow key on the keyboard, go all the way at the bottom of the data set. And then we see that we do have um 14,059 transactions in this data set okay let's go back up um, we do have the date column customer ids we do have their gender information um i'm not sure why we know they're uh you know uh, whether they are married and single um how do we know that this uh, this particular information but we do have it in the database let's assume whether they are a homeowner, number of children, their annual income, the state they live in, and the state, of course, which product family that this transaction belongs to, um, product department, product category, number of items that they purchased, um, and then how much revenue the store collected. All right. So these are all 14,059 transactions that I have, maybe starting from uh december 2016 all the way down to uh, i guess uh let's go back at the very end so it is the last day of 2018 so it's almost like two years worth of data um that i have here and i would like to do some quick calculations for example uh, I would like to maybe uh, take a look at the number of males and females purchased uh, these these uh, these items from me, based on uh, how many of them were singles and made, um, how many of them were a homeowner versus not a homeowner, and their uh, distribution, their annual income distribution. Um, so that maybe I can use this information for my marketing operations, right? So. We do use this kind of information for many different things, but one of the most important ones is, let's say, marketing expenditures or maybe customer segmentation uh, or maybe the commercials that I'm about to run. And I would like to collect this information so that I can shoot the right uh, commercial campaign for the right group of people, right? So uh, your motivation might be very different um, as well. But let's assume that we are looking for these kind of information. All right, how do we do it? Uh, um, in this particular example, I will be using count if function of Excel. Um, it is literally going to count uh, the entries or the transactions made uh, based on certain categories. Um, and I'm going to show how it works uh, in a moment, but let me um, tell you that in chapter three, we are going to take a look at the pivot tables in Excel, and you will see that those operations can be done um, much faster uh, on the pivot, pivot tables. All right, let's get started. Again, the question is uh, then to find the number of males that have uh, that has shopped with me in this past two years, um, and how do we find it? Well, we do have all these information, male or female gender information here in this column D. We will have to find a way to, you know, start counting these Fs and Ms, right? Um, and the correct way to do it is to type count if in Excel, select this function. It tells you, okay, what is your range that you would like to count? And then you will have to tell Excel that it starts at D2. And if you hit comment shift and bottom arrow, arrow keyboard, key on your keyboard, you will see that the entire data set in column D is selected. And then your criteria here is, you'll have to go all the way back up. The criteria here is um, literally, um, M or F, right? So for M, we just go ahead and select here the reference cell, uh, R3, that holds M key, right? And close the parentheses and hit enter. It might take a couple seconds. It's still counting. Well, it, it finished counting. It looks like we do have 6,000, 
889 males shot with us, right? And how am I going to repeat the work that I did here um, for females? I can simply copy this down, but I have to remember that um, this range should be fixed, right? And how you do it in Excel, you add the dollar signs. I am going to enter comment and T. I'm using a Mac, right? I selected, I highlighted this range and then I hit comment and T on my keyboard to add these dollar signs. If you're using your PC, it should be F4. F4 should give you, or FN F4, the, the combination of FN and F4 should give you uh, these dollar signs. So what does this do? You will see that if you drag this formula down, it's going to keep the selections fixed, right? Um, but it's going to um, change R3 to R4 because we did not add the dollar signs there, right? Okay, what if I'm interested in finding the percentage wise, like you know, how many males and females shop with me? It's easy because I already counted the number of transactions males and females uh, did with me, right? So I can simply come over here, um, divide this uh, males by the sum of these two. Okay, and again, I'm going to add the dollar signs here to keep it fixed because I would like to be able to draw it down. And if you take a look at the total of these two, right? And then you can take a look at it and it is adding up to 100, 100%. I do have the summary statistics here. If you uh, select multiple cells and you would like to take a look at the count, average and sum, you can do it here at the very bottom. Uh, for the sake of, um, you know, consistency check. Uh, and let's do the same thing for uh, initial status, singles versus made. All we have to do is to do the same operation, count a function, open the parentheses, we have to select the range. Um, and then it has to be under column E. Let's do the same thing. Uh, but this time, let's go ahead and add comment and T the dollar signs. Okay. And when you do that, and then now let's count for singles. Um, it is counting. It takes time. Uh, in the meantime, maybe we can do the count f of made ones. Okay, here again. I and I will add the dollar signs here. And this time for males. All right, so let's do the percentage calculations again. Well, in the denominator, I will be adding these two. In the numerator, I will be having this, all right, okay. Looks like this 51% for singles. Let's make sure that we do have the dollar signs here as well. Drag it down, and then you can take a look at the sum. Sum is 100%, so it's working. And now uh, you got the idea. Let's do the same thing for homeowners. Maybe we are launching a new product for special for homeowners, and we'd like to see how many of them are actually homeowners. Um, homeowner information is stored in column F. It is counting. Uh, we can drag it down. It's finished already. Uh, another cool thing about Excel is um, you can actually copy one formula and paste it another. Okay. 
Um, but as you can see, it's going to pick up the other selections. Okay. Um, all that you can do here, actually, I did it wrong. I'll delete this. I'll copy the cell and then paste it here. Uh, and then take a look at the selections. Actually, it picked up this uh, S13 nicely. That's what I'm looking for. But uh, um, as you can see, since I fixed the selections here, it picked up the fixed ones. Um, it's not a problem. What you can do here is you can look at this pink square, right? Or rectangle, and then you can just move it down. You see how it is changing. Uh, that's also another easy way of doing calculations in Excel. So let's do a sanity check one more time. As you can see, it worked out just fine. Now we can drag it down here, All right? It looks like we do have 60% as homeowners and 39.9% um, as no homeowners. Um, since annual income column is uh, also given in the data set, I can simple again, simply go ahead and do the count if it goes to let's make this bigger. Count if this time my uh, annual income information is here. And I hit common T to make the selection fixed um, and select my right range of uh, annual income. Okay, it is still counting it. Uh, I will drag it down. Uh, it finished it already. And for the percentage information, uh, what you can do, again, you can simply copy this, paste it here, do a sanity check. You see that it picks up these uh, pink columns, right? And it is incorrect. What you can do is you can move them here, down here, and then you can enlarge this selection in the denominator and it works out just fine. Okay, if you're tired of answering numbers, this is a quick uh, hint uh, in Excel. And as you can see, it is adding up to 100%, which is good. Now let's see how we can visualize this stuff. Um, let's maybe, for example, you would like to put a quick bar chart for, um, for this information. Um, well, actually, Excel is going to recommend you certain charts. You can select those, like recommended charts. It is working out just fine. Let's see if we can do it with this label selected. Oh, it still picks it up nicely. Um, yeah, uh, it works for this, right? And you can do it for percentage calculations as well. So if the columns are not adjacent, there is a quick way of selecting your data that you would like to visualize in Excel. The way that you do it is uh, males and females, those are going to be on my x-axis, right? I selected them. And I hit command on my keyboard and I select uh, the other column that is not adjacent, immediately adjacent to uh, my uh, label column. And then it works out just fine. Again, you can just go to insert and recommend it, um, charts. Um, it is suggesting you that this is the percentage column information. It works out just fine. Um, and you can also do a pie chart as well. Um, you can come over here and select the percentage numbers. And go to insert. Yeah, it works just fine. Um, all other charts are going to be uh, posted, um, but you could do many different visuals here. Um, let's see whether you can do some cool things with Daniel income. I think you can. Uh, you can go to recommended charts. Uh, you can get a pie chart like this. Um, of course, you can modify the, the shape of it here. Uh, you can get um, let's see a histogram maybe. Yeah, it didn't turn out like the one that I was looking for. Okay, bar chart. Well, recommended charts had some bar charts already. Yeah, this one looks cool. 
or you can do the information on the percentage um, column as well. The way that you do it is you select the data. Since it is not adjacent, we cannot go ahead and select everything here. All right, so I need to select this and then I hit command key and then I select the other one. So if you're working on PC, it should be control key that is going to do the trick for you. Um, let's this time go with the, yeah, pie chart. Uh, pie chart, right, so it's about a person to just, okay. Um, you can double click and you can uh, click on format data series. Oh, it's not giving you any options here, but I believe you can select these right away and then get your percentages on the chart. Those are different settings up here. Okay. Um, all right, so these are cool, uh, simple visualizations and summary functions in Excel. Uh, see you on the next video.